Jesus is saying that he's going to lay down his life. And he does lay down his life, not on a threshold. He lays down his life on the cross. And he dies and he sheds his blood for the sins of the world. And nobody can go to heaven except through Jesus Christ. He's the only way. God's love, God's grace, and God's mercy. He's never going to let you go. He's going to chase after you. He's going to hunt you down. You say, well, how long is he going to do that? All the days of your life. Amen. He never gives up on you. I've got two grandsons. They're one and a half and three and a half. And these kids are tall. I'm six foot five. The other grandfather's six foot five. My daughter, her son, is like six eight. So these kids are huge. And the youngest one, the youngest one, is ridiculous. I call him Simba because he is the next lion in the jungle. Okay? You've seen the Lion King where they hold the little guy up? And later he becomes the king and he's cutting Simba. That's why I named my grandson Simba. And uh, you know, when you have babies, I think you know this, but when you have children, you have to take them back to the doctor's office every so often and they measure, they weigh the kid and they, 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 they tell you how tall, and then they tell you, oh, your child is like in the 90 percentile, which means out of all the babies in the world, your, your child is at the 90 percent or the 95. When, when, they, when we took Simba in, the doctor came out and said, hey, we don't have a chart for him. He is off the chart in weight and in height. And uh, we get to babysit because, you know, they live close to us, so they'll drop the kids off. And, and I mean, this kid is a grabber, and he's really good. He's talented at grabbing things that will hurt him, grabbing things that will harm him. Grabbing things that will injure him. Grabbing things that will kill him. And when he's under my care, every second, I'm just not following him, watching him do those things. I'm chasing after him. No, 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 no. I'm chasing after him <laughs> to keep him from killing himself, right? <laughs> and the other day, my wife, the nanny goat, she says to me, she says, you get it, don't you? I go, get what? She goes, Psalm 23, 6. Your goodness and I'm mercy. <laughs> and that's what the Bible says. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. <laughs> and that's what God does for us because, listen, I know I'm talking about a one and a half year old, but we as adults, we're always grabbing things that we think we want or need that we don't know that this is not in our best interest. We're always reaching for something over here that's really not good for us. And we make so many mistakes that if people really knew how many things that we were doing that we shouldn't be doing, they wouldn't even be our friends. But God never gives up on us. <laughs> David did a lot of good things, but David made a lot of mistakes. But he knew that no matter how many times he messed up, that God's goodness and God's mercy, God's loving kindness, God's grace 
never, never would give up on him. And in the same way, God never gives up on you. Just want you to know. Number four, now write this down. This is where this all tied into Easter. You got to get this. The good shepherd does die. He does die. You know, he said, I will lay down, the good shepherd will lay down his life for the sheep. He does. He goes to the cross and he dies. He's buried. And three days later, what happens to him? He resurrects. Now, here's what I want you to do. Write this down. I want you to write down the word trilogy. Trilogy. And I want to teach you something. Trilogy. Everybody say trilogy. trilogy. Now, scholars who've studied this believe that chapters 22, chapter 23, and Psalm chapter 24 all go together and make up what's called a trilogy. Now, I want to tell you something. I just, I, I, I hate to, I just, I just want to tell you how, I want to impress you with how smart I am, okay? Just for one minute, forgive me. But what I've learned is that chapter 23 is between chapters 22 and 24. Okay, I just wanted you to know, I've studied this a long time. Chapter 23 is in between chapter 22 and 20. How many of you already knew that? Oh, you're smarter as me then. So what happened back in chapter 22, the first part of the trilogy? Well, look at the very first verse of chapter 22. If you have your Bibles, it says, here's the first verse of Psalm 22. Do not forget that this was written a thousand years before Christ ever appeared on the scene. It says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, where have you heard that line before? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Where have you heard that line? On the cross. Psalm chapter 22, prophetically, a thousand years before it happens, talks about the day where Jesus dies on the cross. If you go look over at Psalm 22, verse 16 and 17 and 18, it says, Dogs have surrounded me. A band of evil men have encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. People stare and gloat uh, over me. They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. Psalm chapter 22 is talking about that moment where Jesus goes to the cross and dies prophetically. Now, Many times I've heard preachers, and you've heard preachers, you might have even heard me say it years ago. When somebody says, what does that mean when Jesus was on the cross and he says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? There are preachers this weekend saying this to their church. They're saying, well, at that moment, God cannot look upon his son because all the sin was put on Jesus, so God can't, God can't look at sin, and so God turned away, so on the cross, Jesus feels that God has abandoned him, and so he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But I don't believe that's, that happened. If you have children, let's say you have four children and one goes astray, one goes out into a life of sin, do you as a parent turn your back on that one child when they go into sin? I don't believe so. I think you do just the opposite. If you have four children and one goes into sin, you turn immediately and all of your attention goes to the one who's in sin. In fact, you neglect the three good ones. <laughs> and you spend all your time on that one. So I don't think God turned his back on his son because he was taking all of our sins. So what, what was happening when God said, when Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Well, I'm going to explain that to you. Jesus was a rabbi. He was a teacher. And even on the cross, he was teaching. And he looks down. And who's at the foot of the cross when he's dying? He's got nails going through his hands and through his feet. They have beat his face. They have plucked his beard. He's got a crown of thorns on his head. The Bible says his face doesn't even look like a human being. And there at the foot of the cross was his mom. Can you imagine what was going on in the heart of his mom as Mary looks up and sees Jesus down on a cross and right next to Mary is John the Beloved? 
And I think Jesus, as a rabbi, he looks down and he sees, he sees his mother and he sees John and he begins, he, what he says is he goes, hey, 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 stop crying over what's happening. Go back and read Psalm chapter 22. They didn't have Bible verses and they didn't have chapter numbers. They had scrolls. And rabbis would begin teaching a passage by quoting the first line of the scroll. And so Jesus says, my God, my God. He's saying to his mom, 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 don't be upset. Everything that's happening now, God decided a thousand years ago that one day I would be here to die for the sins of the world. This is God's plan to redeem the world, is what he was saying. You say, well, how do you know that? Well, read the rest of Psalm chapter 22 down there at the end in verse 27. Here's what Psalm 22 says. And after all that takes place, there will come a day where all the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord and all the families of all the nations will bow down before him. Oh, I hope you're paying attention. Psalm chapter 22 is explaining the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Psalm chapter 23, what we've been studying the last six weeks, tells us the life that we get to live because of chapter 22, because of the death, burial, and resurrection. And if you read chapter 24, it talks about the king of glory. It says it several times, the king of glory, the king of glory. And it talks about a perfect place where there'll come a time where the Lord God is in charge of everything. I think it's uh, pr prophetically talking about a day when we will all be in heaven together. But those three Psalms go together. The last thing I want to tie into that is when you see the death, burial, and resurrection, all of that is a part of the goodness in God. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. That death, burial, and resurrection is a part of God's goodness and God's mercy pursuing you relentlessly. And the last point, write this down. The good shepherd is the only way to get to heaven. He's the only way. I want you to circle surely and circle the word forever. Surely and forever, all right? Here's what I think was going on. David's writing inspired by the Holy Spirit. He's talking about his relationship with God. All of this is prophetic. Something that's gonna take place out in the future. And David writes, the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet, quiet waters. We go through all the text. Even though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And then uh, he comes to the end and he goes, surely God's goodness and loving kindness will chase me down all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Stay with me. Forever. Mic drop. I want to tell you something. I don't care what popular culture tells you. I don't care what liberal theologians tell you. I don't care what progressive Christianity tells you. There is only one way to get to heaven. There's only one way. In John chapter 10, Jesus said these words when he was explaining how he was the good shepherd and this good shepherd will lay down his life for the sheep. He said, I, I am the gate for the sheep. Whoever enters through me will be saved. Literally, now this is not figurative, this is literally. A shepherd would take all his sheep and put them in the sheepfold. They didn't have doors and hinges and locks. 
It was just a, a, an opening into the sheepfold. And the shepherd would literally put all the sheep in the sheepfold for the night. And then the shepherd himself would lay his body down and sleep in the threshold. The shepherd was the door. No one came in and out except through the shepherd. And Jesus is saying that he's going to lay down his life. And he does lay down his life, not on a threshold. He lays down his life on the cross. And he dies and he sheds his blood for the sins of the world. And nobody can go to heaven except through Jesus Christ. He's the only way. That's what John 3.16 says. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave up his one and only son. That's Jesus Christ. That whoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have what? See, some of you read Psalm chapter 23, you think that David goes, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord for... Some of you think that the temple was built and that David is sitting in the lobby of the temple, and he's like looking up at the temple, and he's going, yeah, this is, I'm, I'm glad that uh, I can live and dwell in this temple for the rest of my life. There wasn't even a temple built when David wrote this. So what was he talking about? He was talking about heaven. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And because I have a relationship with the shepherd, I get to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He's talking about heaven. Let's stand for just a moment. Stand for just a moment. I'm going to pray us out. Don't leave yet. Don't leave. Don't leave. Don't make me come after you. I will chase you down. Hot pursuit. Over here to my left are some doors. If you are here today and you don't know the shepherd, you don't have a relationship, you don't have those seven things on the back of that bullet, that, that outline. If you, if you need Jehovah Ra, Jehovah Jaira, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Sidkenu, Jehovah Shema, Jehovah Nissi. You need to come after I get finished praying and walk through those doors and tell the decision people that you want, you've come today because you want to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you've never been baptized, you can be baptized today in the name of Jesus. Amen. And if you're watching, if you're watching online right now, you text Jesus. Just text Jesus to that number on the screen and we'll get a hold of you. I'll, before I pray, I want to show you a picture. This just happened. They found this guy. This was down in Australia. Australia is a huge place. And they found this old boy. He had been lost for four years years and this is what you look like when you don't have a shepherd <laughs> caring for you don't hey hey don't be mad about what I'm getting ready to say some of you look like that You do. You go, no, I don't. Oh, yes, you do. You're the person who says, I, hey, I don't need God. I don't need to go to church. I don't need the Bible. I don't need Jesus. I don't need all that stuff. I'm just going to go through life on my own. You don't even realize the weight of sin and disobedience that is literally weighing you down all because you think you don't need the shepherd you're not you're not going to get to go into heaven if you don't have the shepherd 
they got a hold of this guy and gave him a haircut. And this is what he looks like now. That's what he looks like right now. See how good that looks? Oh, yeah. I will say to you this. God can clean you up just like that. If you'll come in out of that wilderness, let's bow our heads for just a word of prayer. God, thank you for today. Thank you for this great crowd, a great Easter weekend. Thank you for our study in Psalm chapter 23. These last six weeks have been rich, full of blessing. And God, I pray that we'll think about that word surely and that word forever. Surely. The shepherd, the, the goodness of God, the grace of God, that he pursues us even when we don't want to be pursued, even when we say we don't need God, we don't want God. All of our negative things that we say about God, it doesn't faze him. His love is constant. His love is steadfast. His love is unbreakable. And he will literally hunt us down. We might as well come now and just quit fighting, quit arguing with God and just surrender to God and let him change us from the inside out. God, I pray your blessing on every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl who's listening. Help, help someone to come forward after I'm done praying and go through these doors and just talk to a decision counselor. God, we love you, we praise you, we honor you here today. I ask that you would bring us back safely next week. Your blessings on each of us, we pray. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. amen, amen. Thank you for coming to church. You are dismissed. Hi, my name is Dudley Rutherford, and I'm the senior pastor of Shepherd Church. I wanted to let you know a little bit about our ministry called Lift Up Jesus. There are a lot of television ministry, radio ministries, I know I'm a little prejudiced, but I believe we have the best name going because we exist for the purpose of simply lifting up Jesus, knowing that he will draw all people unto himself. Years ago, we were on one little television channel here in Southern California. I always felt like I wanted someone who watched the program to be able to get in their car and just drive to the church. Never really had a dream for it to be nationwide or anything like that until one day I was in a restaurant. Uh, I went way back in the very far back booth. I had a hat on. I was trying to eat breakfast incognito. And in, in the middle of my meal, a guy tapped me on the shoulder. I turned around and there was this guy covered in tattoos, kind of looked like a gangbanger guy. And he said, Pastor, I'm sorry to bother you in your breakfast, but I want to tell you my story. And he, he begins to explain how he was a professional bank robber. He robbed banks, he robbed grocery stores, he robbed gas stations. And one day in one of those robberies, the robbery went south and his partner in crime was shot and killed. And it so bothered him that he decided that he was going to take his own life himself. And before he took his life, he went back to his house to say goodbye to his mother, who was a godly woman. And when he walked into that house, he tells the story that she looked into his eyes and said, what's wrong? Why are you here? And he said, nothing, mom. I just want to tell you hello, see how you're doing, where in reality he was going to say goodbye and go take his own life. She, he said that she looked right through his eyes and said, you need the Lord and you need to start watching Pastor Dudley on Lift Up Jesus. And he said he started to do that. And he said many times over the last several years, he said, Pastor, your ministry has saved my life because I've been so discouraged by my past and so discouraged by the sin in my life that I just wanted to end it all. But today, praise God, he now is a solid believer in Jesus Christ and ministers to people all over Los Angeles with his testimony. And from that story, God impressed upon my heart, Dudley, if your television ministry will reach someone like that, you need to get your program in as many homes as you possibly can. We're on Sirius XM radio nationwide. We're on 
Direct TV nationwide. We're on a radio station over in the Philippines. Of course, we're here locally in Los Angeles. If you'd like to learn or have more information about our ministry or me personally, just get a hold of us, contact us, number on the screen. We'd love to hear from you. And don't forget, as I always tell my listeners at the end of every program, whatever you're doing and wherever you're going, don't forget to always lift up Jesus. Hey, I want to tell you something that you might not be aware of, but every single month, like clockwork, I send out a devotional via the internet to every listener, to everyone who signs up. It's free, there's no charge. All you have to do is to go to our website, liftupjesus.com, go up to the tab that says Know and Grow. Know and Grow, check on that tab, and you'll find my blog. Log on to my blog, and there's a place for you to sign up today and from now until you cancel it every single month, you will hear from me in your mailbox, your Dropbox. We're going to send you a personal devotional from Lift Up Jesus from my heart into your heart into your home. And you'll start getting your devotionals this week. God bless you and do this today. We live in the most distracted culture in the history of the world. We see about 10,000 messages every day. We even touch our phones about 2,000 times a day. We're literally being overwhelmed with information. That's why there's no better time than right now for Dudley Rutherford's remarkable new book, One Thing, Rediscover a Simpler Faith in Our Complicated World. In this timely book, Pastor Dudley invites you to open your Bible and look closely at seven key passages of Scripture where you'll find the beautifully uncomplicated phrase, one thing. These scriptures will quiet all the noise that you're hearing and call you back to a simpler faith. Dudley Rutherford has discovered the secret of how to focus our lives on the one thing that matters. What if you could find that simplicity? It's waiting out there, and this is your roadmap to freedom. Contact Lift Up Jesus today and get your copy of One Thing, the book that could finally change everything. Research proves that it's the regular hearing and teaching of the Word of God that takes our Christian life to a new level. That's why we invite you to meet Dudley Rutherford every week on this station for another powerful message straight from the Bible. You can also visit liftofjesus.com to sign up for our monthly email devotional, discover Pastor Dudley's books and other resources, and see our national TV and radio schedule. And don't hesitate to reach out on the phone or online. Pastor Dudley has a passion and vision to reach more people with a message of hope. And if you'd like to partner with us to touch the world, we'd love to hear from you. Your financial gift will do so much to help us impact the nations for Christ. And if you're ever in the Southern California area, we invite you to visit us at Shepherd Church here in Los Angeles. It's an amazing experience you'll never forget. Until next time, remember to always lift up Jesus. Jesus.